Welcome everyone. Uh, this is going to be a series of tutorials for my Match 3 project. And the reason that I'm making those is, well, just to maybe help you guys get familiarized with the system and how everything works. Because if you spend a little time inside of the blueprints, you'll quickly realize that it's easy to get lost inside of there. There's a lot of stuff and um, so basically these tutorials are just going to be there to kind of help you to guide you along the process if you want to um, create your own specific mechanics and whatnot. So the way that I'm going to do this is by creating my own um, my own project or my own game and uh, trying to, to adjust the things that I would want in my game and I'm gonna show you guys um, exactly how I do that um, okay well I'm gonna rename everything I'm gonna call this Monster X3 maybe not the best title ever but it will do Monster X3 okay so let's go um, so for this video, what I'm going to try to do is basically have a kind of checkered pattern on the grid slot uh, instead of just a one um, texture used for the entire grid. So, come on, is it up? Yep, it is. Um, okay, so when we start and I've noticed this that the slot image is black uh, I'm not sure if it's it's the only one that does that maybe I, I, I don't really remember maybe I did set it to black um, but anyway so that's the one that we're gonna be changing but what we want is basically let's say we have um, black white black white black white like a checkered right but we want to keep the empty slots uh, in in the same pattern, so the, we don't have any surprise. So it would be black, white, black, white, black, white, black, so on and so forth. Even on the empty ones, right? Um, so the first thing that we're gonna ne need to do for that is we're gonna have to have another one of these variables, right? So right, we're gonna open up the blueprint, and everything we're gonna do today is gonna be inside of the construction script. Um, so I know a little bit where everything is because I built it and whatnot. But if you guys, for you guys, what I would recommend when you're looking for something, okay, so you're gonna look at the name slot image. That's the name of the variable. We don't need this. So if you look, um, slot image is right here. Now you want to find this. The best way to do this, you right, right click, and find reference and then you're gonna have sometimes a big list sometimes a small list so get so we see that it's over here um, I'm gonna unfold these guys to make it a little bit easier to uh, add new stuff okay so slot image is assigned to grid right um, and this is grid so basically we need a second grid and we need a second slot image okay this is um and well we need a second one but i'm going to just say this that in 4.8 we're going to be able to adjust the components variables from instance um components uh at least that's what i think i understood so basically you're going to be able to adjust the um the the instance actors uh, components which you can't do right now um, so f in this case we're gonna have to create a second one so this is an instant static mesh component we want can we duplicate yeah we're gonna duplicate and we're gonna call it grid 2 okay we also need a slot image um, now the slot image uh, where is it again uh, it's over here okay it's a material right now okay because I know that I'm not gonna be changing anything inside of my material during runtime, the opacity and all that, I know 
it's never going to change. But if if you want to do a lot of testing and you're not sure exactly, I do recommend to go and create a material instance and convert this to uh, a material instance. Material instance, you click on this and then click yes, uh, change variable. And then you would have to replug this here. Okay? And then you would have to plug an instance, a uh, material instance now. But like I said, in my case, I don't need to do this because I'm not going to be changing stuff too much, so I'm not going to bother with a material instance. Just going to keep it as is. Just something to keep in mind that you can do pretty easily. We're going to put this back in. Um, but I do need a second one. So duplicate slot image we'll call it two and we're gonna move it back up with the other one slot image two okay so slot image grid background set material of grid two we're basically gonna copy and paste this oops copy paste and grid Oops. And target. And then slot image two. And there we go. Now we have to spawn. Um actually before I go on, somebody had asked me, well, what if I don't want to see um the grid? at all like I don't want to to right now it's a black right I so say I don't want to see this black this black grid at all the easiest way that I would rec recommend doing this you can obviously go and delete everything related to this but the easiest would just be uh, to check hidden in game and then all subsequent um, spawned instance actors are gonna have so basically they're all gonna be hidden and you're not gonna see them right so this be the easiest way. Now, like I said, it's maybe not the most optimized way to do this, um, but I don't think it's a very big issue, as I mean the game works with them. So even if they're just hidden, you shouldn't get any any kind of huge lag or anything like that. I mean, usually they they they're visible. So um anyway so back to our checkered pattern so this looks good we get the material um, so this is where we spawn the uh, add instance in world space now I just want to check yeah they all get okay whoops so now we need to basically have kind of a flip-flop going on but a little bit different so basically what happens here is it's gonna check okay it's gonna check the slot grid value okay and it's gonna check if it's um, zero or bigger if that is true it's gonna spawn a grid otherwise it's not which means it's a minus one okay because if we well, if we set this to a minus one it's gonna hide uh, where is it game boop, 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 down here okay so as you can see for example this one is set to minus one which is this one so it doesn't spawn a grid um, it still adds a collision actor because we're always going to keep track of that but it doesn't spawn one of those um, but in our case we're going to want this to still affect our uh, checkered pattern because let's say okay um, this is black and this is supposed to be white but if it just skips it it's going to put white on this one and then black and then white and then the row below is going to get all messed up so we have to, to flip on even the ones that don't get spawned. So this is not really too complicated. We're just going to use a flip flop basically. Flip flop. And we're going to plug this one in also, which is going to cause it to flip. 
but oops we're gonna have um, another well, another one of these uh, branch that checks the slot grid index to make sure that it's actually gonna spawn something otherwise it's just gonna flip which is something we want to occur flip 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 and we need to get the index of this guy I'll show you guys again it's um... it's basically um... first index uh, it's counting your rows and columns and it's going to do it as many times minus one because it starts at zero uh, so this is your number of grid essentially using your column and um, row number this is what it is so maybe I should add a uh, column times row okay alright so now we have this and if it's minus one actually we want it to do a not or yeah no no we want we want this to be a true if it's equal or bigger than zero then we want you to spawn we want you to spawn your grid actor static instance instance match now, you don't really need to look at all the the transform and stuff that's going on because it's well it's already set as it should be I'm just gonna move this down um, move this down too is there room? no there's not enough room alright um bam index okay I have to do that also and we need this to be grid 2 where are you grid 2? over here spawn grid 2 um, get world transform we have to get it from the sphere collision Oh yeah, because it's using the sphere collision collisions um, position and whatnot. Uh, do I need to use this one though? Because this one is if it's not. Well, no, because if it's not spawning, I don't need that one. So now, just to test it out, we're gonna create a duplicate slot two. I'm gonna make it a white. Oh, Skype, be quiet. White. And we're gonna assign it. Okay and looks like it worked because this is black white 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 and I get my checkered pattern just like that that was pretty easy right um and just to make sure let's say this one was minus one we put it back to zero there we go Okay, so just like that, I was able to get my checkers pattern. And actually, um, before we proceed, I'm going to put the textures that I have for them. So basically, I'm just going to... And the opacity, I'm going to use an opacity of 0.6. And come on. There's one thing about materials I don't like. It takes forever to save. Uh, texture sample, I 
Look at this. Texture sample, yes. Always use the emissive because we don't have lighting. Unless you're using 3D and you want um, to use lighting. Um, okay, I'm going to need to create a texture. I don't have a texture material folder. Okay, create a new folder texture. Texture, and I'm going to import my my textures, which are here, project, match, three, framework, sample, beast, and we're going to use this. Boom, we're going to create, no, we're not going to create materials because we already have slot. Can I open both of them? Anyways. So, case uh, eight, yeah. Just like that. And I'm going to copy, paste, and remember this is a 0.6. And you know, this is why I didn't need a texture or a material instance because I know this is 0.6 and blah blah blah. But when I was doing my test, my testing, I used a material instance because I was switching stuff, I was switching colors, and it's just a lot easier to do that within a material instance. Save. And I should have mm -hmm. well I may have to change a few things, but essentially it's what they uh, want. Um, blah, 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 blah. Scale slot, let's say five. Make it a little bit smaller and possibly smaller. Um, and maybe I'm gonna want black to be before white so that my edges are all darker or not red. I think I would like to do that. Um, but anyways, those are all little tweaks that I'll see how I want everything to look. And uh, once I add my um, my game pieces, which are not going to be uh, square colors, um, I'll, I'll change all that. But anyway, so this was a really easy way to get the checkers pattern. Um, I'm not sure what the next tutorials are going to be. I'm going to see where I'm going to go with this uh, little project and see what kind of features that I think would be cool to add and try to show you guys um, how to do that. Um, in the meantime, I'm just trying to think, is there anything worth... Um, uh, da -da -da. I mean, like I said, the, 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 the most important thing is, because obviously when you look at something like this, it's really hard to uh, figure out what's going on, and um, the best way to do it is when you want to change certain things, is like I showed you, find your variable, and uh, realize where it's happening, and then from there you can do stuff. Um, and all this, because most of all this stuff is just setting the basic variable variables, uh, doing some math, um, a lot of algorithm. And um, but once you understand how everything kind of works together, it's not that bad. It really isn't. Everything is really well uh, confined within their own sections, if you will. So, anyways, like I said, we're going to have some more tutorials, and I'm definitely going to be receptive to you guys' questions and try to answer as much as I can. Um, so, you know, hopefully you enjoyed this, and hopefully this was a little bit helpful for you guys. And, um, well, until the next video, okay, take care.